Good morning. It's Mark Bossard here with the Pollock Automotive Podcast with Mr. Bernie Pollock of Pollock Automotive in Vancouver. 19 time winners of best auto repair in Vancouver as voted by their customers. How are you doing this morning, Bernie? Doing very well. So we're going to talk about a little issue that we noticed um, earlier in one of our earlier podcasts where you brought up a dash warning light picture and there was a whole bunch of lights that I'd never seen before and I went, what the heck are all these? So you're going to show us the, what the dash warning lights are on a 2008 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, it's a diesel model. What was going on with these lights and what are they? Well, let's start first of all, um, this is just going to, I think we're going to start an educational series on dash warning lights because a lot of people don't really understand them. And it's really important to understand what they mean because they can, you know, create a lot of stress if you don't know what they mean, or you can, if you don't know what they mean, you can also make dumb decisions by ignoring them. So let's just, you know, we'll, we're going to work, we'll start with this Jeep and uh, work our way through. So, I mean, the first place to start before I get into the picture is uh, there's basically two major colors of warning lights. There's amber lights and there's red ones. And the red ones are lights to be taken seriously right now. Amber ones are, okay, something's going on and you need to get some service or something addressed down the road. You'll notice like often a car check engine light, uh, which is a pretty popular light on, on every car, uh, is an amber light. So it doesn't, when it comes on, it doesn't mean, oh my God, you gotta pull over. Only, the only time with a check engine light you really need to be really concerned is when the light is blinking because that indicates a catalyst damaging engine misfire. And that, Essentially, you can keep driving the car, but it's going to cost you a lot more money if you keep driving it for too long. So that's the only time that light should probably be red, but it doesn't. It, it's an amber light telling you there's something that needs to be serviced. Amber and blinking. Amber and blink. Yeah, amber and blinking is serious, but that's the only light that's kind of a bit of an anomaly. Yeah, have you got a picture? Can we? I do, yeah, because that would yeah. really make this a lot more entertaining. <laughs> okay, so let's get in the picture of our Jeep. So, and I'll just hide us out of the way here somewhere so we can actually see this warning light. So um, I realize, so when you turn the key on to start the vehicle, you'll, you'll normally get all of your warning lights coming on. Sometimes they'll just blink on for a second or two. And I realized one, one light I didn't capture on this, this is a Jeep diesel. There's one light that is, sits right here. It's, it's a little yellow coil light that looks like a, a coil sitting sideways. And that is the glow plug warning light. So that, that light's not on, on this particular, uh, picture because uh, I guess it switched off kind of quickly. The glow plug warning light, by the way, will come on for a longer period of time when the engine's cold. You'll also notice uh, if you own an old diesel vehicle, I mean, back uh, a couple of decades, the, the warning light will stay on a lot longer than a modern diesel. Some of them, they'll just stay on for a, even cold a second and then shut off. So, but the, the key with this light is you want to wait, when you turn the key on, you want to wait to start it until after that light goes out. Um, the other thing, uh, this is a diesel model. The only difference, and I actually went through a manual on the Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee, the only difference uh, between the dash on a gas and diesel model is in this spot here that I'm circling where the, where the glow plug light is. This has a, um, a tow haul warning light um, that, that, that's basically with the automatic transmission. So that's basically an automatic transmission mode that's available. And there is also on some of them a four wheel drive low warning light uh, that, that does come on in this spot as well. So let's go through some of these lights and I'm gonna point out there are a couple that are not illuminated in this picture as well, but let's just, let's start with the red lights. So you have your brake light here. Now there's an I and a P. P is for parking brake. The I indicates a, a brake system issue. Normally when this light will come on is it'll either come on, so this, the key is once you start the engine, if these lights remain on, that's, that's when it's a concern. Um, or when you're driving, the light comes on. So generally the brake light um, will be on if you have the parking brake on. When you remove, take the parking brake off, this light will go off. Uh, the eye light, um, which is probably, uh, this is probably just one light that, that does two functions. A lot of cars are like that. Uh, that can often indicate there's low brake fluid in the, mas master, or the brake master cylinder reservoir. So if you have your parking brake off and the light's off, go check your brake fluid level because it could be low. Now, low brake fluid uh, shouldn't happen. It, it's, it's an indication of one of a couple of things. It could be that the uh, brakes are worn out uh, near, or nearly worn out uh, or that there's actually a leak in the brake fluid system. But you can top it up, to put, the, put the light up, but you should go in for service and have it looked at. Um, this here is your seat belt light. Um, as long as your seat belt, if you're sitting in the driver's seat or pass, you have a passenger and they're not buckled in, this, this warning light will come on. 
this is the airbag system warning light. So this will uh, test the airbag system. And if all things are good, uh, it sometimes takes a few seconds. Sometimes they blink a couple of times, depends on the vehicle, but on the Jeep, essentially the light will go out and uh, you, uh, you know, if it's out, then your airbag system is all working fine. Uh, other red lights, um, this red light here on a Jeep is, an in, is for the security system. It's just basically a round dot. Um, again, it'll go off when, you, when the vehicle's running, but if it blinks or does anything weird, there's, a, there's an issue with the security system, uh, something that'll need to be repaired and fixed. But, you know, of course, it won't likely cause you any problem to drive the vehicle. It just indicates that there's a, you know, if you care about your security, it's important. But also, there can be an issue with the security system where the vehicle won't start. So if that light stays on and won't start, that, that could be an issue. But again, you'll be taking it to a shop to get it fixed. Um, this is a warning light. It's a throttle issue warning light. This is a pretty serious warning lap uh, on Jeeps. It's, it's on gas motors as well as diesels. Um, and the particular Jeep that kind of inspired us to do this, we had a couple of weeks ago with a uh, some... Um, uh, intake uh, intake manifold runner issue. So while diesels don't really have a throttle, um, you know, it indicates a serious malfunction that 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 when normally when this light comes on, uh, the vehicle will be running in a reduced power mode just to get you to a shop to fix. Sometimes you can shut the key off and you can restart the vehicle and the light will be off. So that might get you, you know, to where you want to go. Um, that's always worth a try when you have a warning light on, by the way, uh, except for this one. This is the big one. That looks like a can of oil. When this red light is on, that means there is insufficient oil pressure in the engine. And that is, that is critical. Uh, now, that light can also go on because the sensor malfunctions, but you don't really want to make an assumption on that. Um, I mean, I have owned vehicles where this light has come on, and if you don't hear a ticking noise in the engine, you could take a risk of driving it, but I wouldn't. If, it, if this light comes on, shut the engine off and have it towed to a shop and have it checked out. You, you, you'd be better to change the sensor than you would be to uh, have to replace the engine if you make the wrong judgment call. Would that be if you're a little bit not scared of lifting your hood and what about checking your oil at that point? Absolutely. So, so yeah, so th that, would be the, that would be the first thing you'd want to do. Th thank you, Mark, for mentioning that. Shut the engine off right away and go check your oil level. Now, if the oil is low, um, add a liter at a time. I've had people who, you know, they look at the dipstick, oh my God, there's no oil in the engine and they pour in, you know, go get a five liter jug of oil, pour it all in at one time, and then the engine is <laughs> filled. Seen that many times, that's not a good thing to do. No, it's liter. really bad. <laughs> yeah, it is. Now, um, you know, add a liter at a time. Now, if it's way, way, way down, I mean, that's a, that's a, obviously, obviously it needs work, but I mean, if it's, this light is not a low oil level warning light. So just be aware that when this light comes on, it's usually a very, it's usually a very serious issue unless the, elect the electrical sensor is bad, and that does happen from time to time. So um, sometimes it's not a bad thing, but, but you need to address it. You, don't, you, don't, you wanna take, of all the lights on the vehicle, this is the one you wanna take the most seriously, because um, it's the one that can cost you, the, cost you the most amount of money to ignore. Um, now, uh, on the left side of the dash, we have this light that says plus minus, looks like a battery. It's basically, a, as Chrysler describes it, it's a volt, low voltage warning light. Um, it looks like it's a battery problem, but usually it'll indicate that the alternator is not functioning and charging the, charging the vehicle. But there's a number of other things that can happen. It can even, mat, it can even indicate that the belt has jumped off the front. You would, you would because the, the alternator is belt driven now, um, you would notice that too because your power steering will become very stiff. So if that light's on, and often a, a, some other lights will come on at the same time, it's a pretty good indication that your belt is skipped off. But not to diagnose stuff. I mean, when that light is on, it's something pretty serious to deal with. You, you may be able to drive the car, but not for long because modern vehicles consume a lot of electricity. So batteries, even good ones, don't last very long. You, you might be lucky if you got an hour's driving time before it dies. Uh, diesels, you know, do have a lot of, you know, require a lot of electricity to fire the fuel injectors as well. Um, but gasoline motor, same kind of thing. So there we have our red lights. Um, I'm just looking at a, a uh, picture see. On, on the uh, Jeep as well, one couple lights that aren't on here, there's a low fuel amber, low fuel warning light. So let's get into the amber lights. There's a low fuel warning light that'll come on here. It looks like a, uh, a uh, gasoline pump. So, I mean, that'll come on when your fuel level is down to a certain point. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm just looking to see if there's anything else we're missing here. I think that's pretty much covers it. So let's get into the amber light. So this tire pressure monitor light. So these lights will come on. Sometimes they'll blink. Sometimes they'll just be on. 
But this is, you know, any vehicle that has a tire pressure monitoring system, it's a fantastic feature because you don't really have to check your tires every week or every month. When the light comes on, that's when you need to pay attention to it. So again, it's unless you're noticing the vehicle's handling badly or making a thumping sound, because it could do that if it's lost all its pressure. Um, you know, next, you know, next time you, you know, have if the light comes on, good to walk around the car and just look at your tires. Make sure they're not none of them are flat. If they all look reasonable, uh, you know, go get the pressure checked as quickly as you can. Uh, don't do any long highway trips. Make sure the pressures are all good first of all. If the light remains on. Um, some vehicles require you to reset them. Jeeps are not like that. They they have a sensor in the tire, so it'll once the pressure's set, it'll re it, the light should go out. If it doesn't, then you have a problem with the system that needs to be addressed, and you have to take it to a shop. Over here, the ABS light. Now again, this is an amber light, but ABS is the anti-lock brake system. Um, it it basically provides better braking than the regular brake system, but without it, it, you'll still be able to stop the car fairly well. But again, that's a warning that there's a problem with the ABS system that needs to be addressed and you should take it to a shop and have it looked at. Check engine light, we discussed earlier. Um, again, if it's not, if it's on, take it to a shop at some point, get it scanned, see what's, you know, get it scanned and diagnosed, see what's, see what's going on with it. Um, and, but if it's blinking, uh, that's when you need to take a lot of, you know, caution, you should have it repaired right away because you, you'll cause some costly uh, damage. Over, we're moving over to the right, we have the uh, traction control system. Uh, sometimes this light will come on, like a traction control system helps the vehicle basically grip when, it, when it's slippery. So um, with, through the, it often uses the ABS brake system to do this um, or various other sensors. If there's a problem with the system, the light will be on all the time. But sometimes you might accelerate, say on a slippery road and, and it'll lose traction. You'll actually feel it and this light will start blinking and then it goes out. That's no big deal. That's just indicating something's happening. But if the light's on all the time, the traction control system's got an issue. And a lot of times it will come on with the ABS light because these systems, some of them work in, in conjunction with each other. And finally, our last light is the ESP BAS. Now ESP is electronic stability programming and BAS is a brake assisting system. Um, that again, uh, these are electronic sensors, often related with the traction control system, but it's basically there to keep your vehicle stable on the road. Um, it, some, some vehicles, it'll tune your suspension system. So you, it's, it's essentially there so you, you, you don't lose control for simple things like going around a corner too fast. And not saying you should drive crazy around a corner, but it's when you lose traction for certain things, electronic sensors will come in and they'll, they'll activate the ABS brake system or activate the throttle and, and, and help you, uh, Keep your car more stable on the road. So these are these are all good things. Again, if this light's on, there's something going on, it'll need to be checked. But again, they're amber lights. So uh, you know, a, a couple other lights I haven't talked about because they're not really warning lights or the you know the turn signal lights. There's also the, the high low beam indicator. Uh, the high to low beam indicator on a Jeep is here. It's usually a blue light. So that basically uh, that's a long-winded version of what's going on in your dash. Um, and um, yeah, again, with red lights, more serious, amber lights, get it checked soon. So thanks for going through that. Uh, do you have any final thoughts? I think I just said it, you know, just, you know, red lights, take them seriously, especially that oil light. That's a really critical one. And it also, a number of vehicles have a, you know, and we'll talk about these, you know, as with different vehicles. I don't believe Jeep has a low oil level warning light. At least I haven't seen that when I look through the manual, but this is, a, this is a good reason to look through your owner's manual. If your vehicle has a low oil level warning light, this is a good light to have because when the oil gets down to a certain level, you can, you can go check it and find, oh yeah, it's low a liter or two and you top it up and, and there you go. So um, that's, that, it's, it's critical to know whether you have that versus the, the red oil can light because that, you know, once that light comes on, it's, it's serious stuff. So there you go. If you need more information about your vehicle, the guy or service, in fact, for your vehicle or repairs, the guys to see in Vancouver are Pollock Automotive. You can reach them at 604-327-7112. That's the number to call if you need to book an appointment in Vancouver. Uh, or check out our website, pollockautomotive.com, YouTube videos, Pollock Auto Repair, Hundreds of videos on there about all makes and models of cars over the years. And of course, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Thanks, Bernie. Thanks, Mark. And just as a last thing, what should people do if they're uh, not from the Vancouver area? Feel free to search around and find a good service advisor, a good shop in your area to get your vehicle repaired. They will be able to give you the same kind of information and support 
that we do here on the internet. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thank you.